Hi everyone, Nick here from Conservation Careers and welcome to the podcast. Now, how do you switch careers from working in IT and quality management for 20 years to making a real impact in conservation? That's exactly what today's guest, Claire Roberts, has achieved in the past few years, and she's here today to share her story. Now, we start by exploring her pre-conservation career in the corporate world of IT consultancy, where she used her free time to volunteer at home and abroad. We then discuss what triggered her decision to change her career focus towards sustainability and conservation. Now, Claire is very much a case study for how to go about switching careers. She outlines how she did some deep self-reflection to identify what's important to her and her transferable skills before engaging in her chosen area through webinars, trainings, networking, and more. Now today she's thriving in her career working as a project manager at Emek Ecology, which is an innovative profit generating consultancy which forms part of a wildlife trust charity. Claire shares what it's like to do her job and lots of practical advice for people like you who might be interested in following her footsteps. It's a career switching, impact creating, project managing pod chat. Enjoy. Hi, yeah, I'm Claire Roberts and I'm the um, Network Rail Biodiversity Project Manager for Emic Ecology. So we are the East Midlands Environmental Consultants and we're part of the Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust, so a wholly owned subsidiary of that. Wonderful, yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you, Claire. I really am. I feel like we've known each other for a few years now and I've, I've watched you kind of transition from a quite a different career into where you are now. And to share your journey and for you to kind of share your time with us, you know, I'm really appreciative of that. So excited to kind of uh, discover and talk about your career. Um, we're just saying in the preamble, what I'd like to do really at the beginning is to kind of focus on your early career first. And then we'll talk about maybe your transition and then what you're doing now and all the lessons you've learned kind of along the way. So let's start at the beginning of the story. So you've transitioned into conservation, but what were you doing previously? I'm aware you've had like a 20 year career before sustainability and conservation just paint us a bit of a picture of what did that career look like absolutely yeah so um my background's really in it and i did a degree in um applied computer systems which was uh, a, a a great thing uh i i'm gonna say that all the way along i've i've always wanted to really work in in conservation but yeah. it is very much one of those things where i was able to work in IT and uh, it was it was one of those things where there was lots of exciting projects to do and I ended up working in consultancies in um, in IT so I, I worked for some big consultancy organizations some smaller consultancy organizations um, mm -hmm. in a variety of different sectors a lot of it was software testing um, some of it was um, wider team management in IT and a lot of it was also uh, a, a big thing was really around sort of organising the project work and doing a lot of the planning of, of um, delivering things and meeting objectives and, and working with, with big organisations, small organisations to help them to, to um, introduce systems into the business that were going to do a, a, a different thing for them. So there was a lot about sort of introducing changes and uh, doing um, work with people within the organisation to help them understand what they were going to get. So lots of quite interesting aspects to it. And uh, yeah, so I worked for um, most recently for for some electronics companies in the Cambridge area. So um, again, it, uh, team management skills and lots of things there that I was using in those roles. So yeah, lo lots of different things. Really interesting. Yeah. And quite different from conservation. For me, this is a totally new area. I know nothing about the work that you've done previously. It's all new to me. What, what would a typical day or week look like, perhaps in your most recent role for the the Cambridge IT consultancy just just paint this yeah. bit of a picture like you know bring it to life for us yeah yeah I mean a, a lot of it was really um working out what was going to be delivered in a, in a new IT system um yep. what all the features were going to be and um getting an understanding about what um they were supposed to do how it was supposed to work and 
putting together plans for how it was going to be checked to make sure that it did what it said on the tin. So um, a lot of it was really talking to people, understanding what was happening, um, reading the little bits of information that were there, trying to piece that jigsaw together and to then convert that into a work plan for the team, really. So lots of um, lots of talking to people, lots of uh understanding at the technical level what the system was going to do and how we might check that it was going to do that. Um, there's a lot about setting a, 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 a test environment up, getting information data um, and systems put together so that they could actually be be tested and in, in lots of different ways for all the sorts of things that we have to check for, um, including sort of the, um, the resilience and, and making sure that things perform well over time. So lots of different um, checks that we had to do so a lot of it was about organizing that and reporting to people telling people yes this was okay um, there were issues with certain things you know what would we do about them um, putting things through repeated cycles of you know does it work now nope still mm -hmm. broken this thing's not working now try this um, so lo lots of different things and then finally did the decision making yes it's good enough Here's what we need to do, um, or and, and leading people through that decision making process to to say yes, this is good enough to go out the door. Got you, got you. And well, I, I, there's a few questions in my mind as I'm listening to you. I hope you don't mind me asking, but did you enjoy that work? Like, did you enjoy that that career that you had there? Um, I, I, there was there was all sorts of good things about it. I did yeah. enjoy certain aspects about it, but I'd done it for so long, and there was uh -huh. an awful lot of repetitive stuff in what we did. Yeah. Um, and I think in the end, there was no more to learn. Um, mm. So I think that that was one of the things where it was I, I, I ended up changing organization to sort of change the system I was working with um, mm. rather more than I wanted to do, because that was the only variety there really was. It was it was more, you know, otherwise, once you get into doing something, it's very much OK. We have this system that does this. We're updating it. There's just more to do again, same again. So I think that that's one of the really challenging things with it. And is that part of the reason for wanting to then change the career and the, the switch that you've kind of transitioned across from? Like what what's initially? No, I, I'm from? gonna say that actually yeah. it was very much the pull from I've always wanted to work in conservation. Mm -hmm. Um I, I left university. I did uh, quite a lot of stuff with what was then BTCV, British Trust for Conservation Volunteers, which Remember is now well. Trust for Conservation Con Volunteers, and um, I, 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 my um, my friends who were on my course will will, will tell you this that I, I left saying, oh, I never want to see another keyboard again. I want to I want to go and work in conservation. <laughs> <laughs> go and do that. And then <laughs> then somebody came along with a job and said, oh, you could do this. And I went, oh, okay, maybe I could. And <laughs> I'll come back to it later. So um, right. eventually we got to later. <laughs> so it's an itch you wanted to scratch, basically. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It's very much always been there, and I've always had a, a a parallel track, a parallel career in volunteering, really, all the way through. I've um, been involved with lots of different organisations um, over the years. Um, when I lived in London, um, I was absolutely desperate to get out. I did. Um, I worked with the Royal Botanic Gardens Q, um, helping them to run some educational activities and um, increasingly getting sort of involved in some of the, the horticultural bits and pieces where they needed extra extra pairs of hands to do things. So aware of that, what they were doing and the, the sort of scientific research and some of the biosecurity procedures and all the sorts of things that they had in place there. Lots of lots of interesting stuff there. And um also, um, with uh, Rally International, I was lucky enough to go on an expedition to Chile with them and um, got involved with doing some of the um, the ecology surveys that they were doing for invertebrates there. And uh, that was fantastic with some of the Natural History Museum people who came across. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we set up um, pitfall traps and all sorts of things. And apparently um, in those we caught... Um, uh, over a hundred species of beetles that were new to science, which was oh. which was fantastic. But uh, it, they were they, they were what you describe as the the small brown ones that <laughs> are not particularly distinctive. The yeah, LBJs, yeah. little brown jobs, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was all, all good science stuff, and it was all it was fantastic to be doing that and to be following the methodologies of the projects and and uh, really just getting to know people out in the fields and it's like yeah. doing sort of work. 
So you've got these sort of parallel tracks and you've got your career in IT and quality management. You're still keeping up your passion for conservation, sustainability through volunteering in Yes. what I'm hearing your own free time in your vacations and uh, evenings, weekends, presumably when you're doing BTCV and others. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I did actually take a year out at one point and I went and worked in um, a variety of voluntary roles. Um, I did a, um, a placement with TCV in the Environmental Education Centre up in Leeds, um, which was amazing. That's still going strong and uh, they... They were always on the lookout for people who who want to go and spend sort of, um, you know, six months or more doing educational um, volunteering work there with them, with school groups and things. And that, that's a fantastic um, organisation to be involved with. Um, they've developed a, a amazing um, facility there, which is um, an amazing training ground, really, for, for people wanting to get into conservation, but also providing fantastic uh insights into nature for people in Leeds who've um, potentially not, I mean, some of the school groups, um, some of them haven't really um, had an awful lot of contact with um, just being outside. They, they don't really even have school playgrounds in some of those schools anymore. So it's, it's a bit, of, it's a bit tough. So it's, it's great just to get them out and sort of do pond dipping and take them through the woods and turn logs over and, you know, play games and things. So yeah, lots of, lots of great things. The stuff kids should be doing, yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us then about your your switch. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. When did you decide? Actually, I'm going to really now not just do this as a kind of something on the side, volunteering, you know, internships. Actually, I want this to be my my career now. Like, wh when did that happen? What? Yeah, so that happens, I suppose, round about the time of the lockdowns. A lot, like a lot of people, I started taking stock of where I was with things. Yeah. And um, I think as well, um, it was becoming increasingly aware of the climate issues that we're facing. And um, it, it was really partly prompted by wanting to actually do something um, Mm. rather than sort of sit there and go, oh, OK, um, So it, it, it was. Um, I'm, I'm very much an active person. I like to. I like to feel that I'm doing as much as I can to sort of nudge something in the right direction and to, to help help things to happen. And so, yeah, it was. It was a mixture of those things, really. It, it, it had long been an ambition, and Mm. uh, it just felt like time. I, as I said, I got to that point where um, I was a, a bit a bit bored, maybe a bit burnt out with what I was doing. Um, and yeah, it was it was a good point to sort of say, yes, I'm I'm really going to do this now. So what happened? Like, what what steps did you then take? Like, a Um, lot of people feel confused or disillusioned. yes, Like, yeah, yeah, what did you do? yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great talking to you now because I mean, literally almost one of the first things I did was in my lunch break at work one day. I was kind of like on Google, and it was like conservation careers came up, and there were all these great resources, and I was like. Okay, well, we'll start here then and <laughs> see what these people have got to say. <laughs> and uh, there were some really useful things. And I think um, I joined um, the Conservation Careers community quite early on in the in this process, actually. Mm. And it was really nice to sort of see that there were um, there was a community of people that was sort of there helping to support people to transition careers and with lots of ideas and, and suggestions and uh, experience in doing that. So that was really um one of the things that I came across early on and I think I signed up to a few of the courses that sounded good um certainly the comms course was one of the first ones I did and I think I I still use that information on a almost weekly basis actually it's been really really useful I'll tell Lloyd that's great <laughs> um, yeah no that's it's uh, um I definitely uh sound loud. um yeah I, it, it was it was um it's been so useful actually that and just uh having some of these things to sort of uh help to um identify I mean I think the boot camp was one of the other things that I did earlier on as well to and sort of help to find a focus and a lot of that was really around sort of well, what is it that I'm actually going to end up doing and finding what that was and um that was um a bit scary because it was like I knew I didn't want to be a field officer or something that was kind of you know out in a reserve um you know it, it, that wasn't what I was looking to do I really wanted to do something that made a bit of a bigger difference and Mm. so um those jobs are 
somewhat more difficult to sort of pin down, I think, when you first start looking and, and trying to see what those are. They're less numerous. They're more specialised. So um, I think you're trying to find out what that right thing was. It was really helpful to get some ideas. And I did a lot of other things with other bits of networking and um, coaching with various people to try and identify, you know, what my real sort of transferable skills were and what uh, what motivated me really. Mm. Um, I ended up with a, a little um, a little sort of uh, um, post-it note on the wall with with sort of um, work work with trees and woodlands written on the, on the wall <laughs> and uh, that was that was kind of my focus in terms of doing that I think I've, I've pretty much got there in the end really with a lot of the stuff that I'm doing so um that was uh what certainly one of the things that um I did in the early days and um some of it was for them really once once I found that focus was about then um really doing a bit of research and mm -hmm. lots of webinars and things. Um, I signed up to do the uh, training on the UK forestry standard, actually with the Forestry Commission and the mm -hmm. Institute of Chartered Foresters, uh, which was Trees. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Trees. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that's brilliant. I really love this. Um, I joined as many webinars as I could. Um, there was mm -hmm. the Small Woods Association. They had some really good stuff. Um, there was um, various ones that um, DEFRA and lots of local groups and um, Natural England and things were running at various times. I, I was kind of like, yes, well, we'll, we'll find out. And it it's sort of a good way of building a network as well because yeah. you kind of will encounter people who've spoken on webinars and then you kind mm -hmm. of – you know, you, you know then what they do, you get that in, insight into what those roles might be and what people are talking about, what's new to people in the um, in the sector even. So it was mm. um, it was a good way to sort of um, do a bit of finding out. And I think the other thing really um, that I did quite early on was to sort of, um, and this was probably part of your conservation careers boot camp actually, which was to, look at what actual roles there could be as a result of that and mm. uh, do that sort of gap analysis of where I was and what I could bring to it already and what what the gaps were mm. and so that was great um and then I started just doing lots of little courses in the background really that were things that would sort of help me to do that so um I did a change management course for example that gave me a certification in that which is something I'd kind of been doing informally in my role for yeah. many years but it was great to have something that said yes I can do that and mm. so various bits like that that were um really sort of uh good to help to sort of match that up and then um I think I was sort of working towards it and then I, I think I have what um everybody calls the MSc dilemma do I do I need to go and do a qualification mm. shall I go and do a master's mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of a lot of soul searching there um, in terms of, you know, would this be the right thing? Would it actually get me further along the line? And I, there, um, I did go and apply, I think, for two or three different MSCs, actually. And I got a couple of offers with places to go and do things. And in the end, I decided that actually for the roles I really wanted, they it wasn't an absolute requirement and it was going to be a huge financial commitment more than anything else. Um, it was, it was, you know, going to be best part of 30 or 40,000 pounds by the time I'd gone and actually done it and lived somewhere for a year. And, um, yeah. yeah, so it was, none of them were around the corner. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there would be fantastic things. I'll probably still go and do one one day, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, not something that I had to do. So instead I decided I was going to do some, shorter uh part-time courses full-time yeah. and so i chose to do a professional certification um in sustainability with yeah. iema um yeah. so i did a stuff at environmental management yeah um, which is the institute for environmental uh, management and assessment yeah thank you management assessment IEMA, yeah yeah um uh, they're a fantastic professional organization if anybody's interested generally in sustainability and the sort of wider issues climate um they're, they're very they're very supportive they're great 
And, and that was online learning, I'm right, yeah, in saying that. Um, yes, it was. It was all. I mean, it was. It, there was um, a tutor there, um, yeah. but it was very much um, self-paced and online. So it's something that you could do over time um, yourself mm -hmm. as a um, part-time thing. Um, and I also decided I was going to do a certificate in conservation management with um, ecology training, which mm -hmm. was uh, again a very very good grounding. And uh, our friends who sell, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely recommend that as well. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, and again, met some really good people through doing that. Um, so, yeah, that that's also been very useful. I mean, a really good sort of high-level introduction to, um, you know, all the issues in ecology and the surveying and, and everything there that is is very much sort of bread and butter of what I'm doing at the moment. So, yes, mm -hmm. it's a re really good insight there. That was great. So... Um, it I find it really insightful, Claire, actually just listening to that. So there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. One is you spent a lot of time sort of doing self-reflection, learning about yourself. You had a coach that you went through and really started to refine and identify what are your transferable skills, what are you passionate about, trees, you know, and start to kind of get, get some clarity on you as an individual and where you might want to kind of focus your energies. Two, you've, you've increased your knowledge base as much as possible. You've attended loads of webinars and trainings and events and and through that, also then networked, met a lot of people as well at the same time, growing that connection of contacts who could be useful at some point. And they're all interested in the same things as you. So they're friends, you know, and that's the way I view them anyway. Um, and then you've doubled down, you do some specific trainings to kind of to, to help you to become, I guess, more qualified and certified and spent a lot of time deciding whether you wanted to invest in the masses or not. And you decided for the career path that you're choosing, you didn't need it now. Yeah. yeah. So that that is there's a lot going on that's kind of coming together, but it probably didn't feel strategic at the time. But standing back, you've kind of really gone through a lot of the ticking a lot of the boxes in terms of getting ready, clear, and moving forwards. Yes. Yeah. I I think it, uh, when you're in the midst of it, um, you're still never really kind of absolutely sure that it's it's all the right things. And I think so long as you get, you know. 85% of the boxes ticked in, yeah. in anything you're going for, you know, nobody's, I, I I think there's a saying that, you know, if you're the perfect candidate for the job, you're already moving on from it because you've already done it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. We always say yeah. like Superman, Superman doesn't exist. You just need enough, <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. and with like an 80, 20 rule, actually, you know, 85%, yeah. you can get there quite quickly, actually, if you're not aiming for perfection. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it was really around just making sure that was there. Um, and I think professionalizing that experience. I mean, certainly yeah. through the forums and things on conservation careers, I've come across a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah, I, I, I really want to work in marine. And, you know, I love it because I love the sea. And it's like being able to say more about it than just, yeah. you know, I love it. I mean, I love woodlands, but it was about yeah. being able to say more than that. Yeah. And, I really, now understand yeah. woodlands. Yeah. I, I, I understand it. And actually, from a professional point of view, I want to be able to make an, an impact in the biodiversity in woodlands and making yeah. sure that we've, we've got that sustainability for the future and you know what that really means. So it, it, it's about being able to sort of professionalise that view, I think, and um, be you know able to actually offer something and, and deliver within the with, within the sector, really. So, yeah. Yeah. We often talk on our side um, at Conservation Careers about a role being two things. One being the cause that you're really passionate about. I love marine, I love trees, you know, and then really getting a good knowledge base around that, which is exactly what you've done with the FSC forestry training and so much. And so that's the kind of cause. And then what's the role you're going to play? What's the job you're going to do? What skills are you deploying? You know, right now you're a project manager for the Wildlife Trust at MAC Ecology. And we'll talk about that in, in a second. What did you learn about the skills you already had in your back pocket from your IT career? Because uh, my assumption is, and forget, tell me if I'm wrong, you probably didn't feel you had many skills that are relevant to conservation, but what did you learn about actually what you have that that is useful and could be applied or you are even applying now today? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I learned a lot about the sorts of things that people were asking for in mm. the roles were actually in some ways not widely different 
from a lot of the stuff that I could bring from the consultancy experience that I'd had and particularly from managing a team mm. and so that was that was one of the things that um, they were looking for was somebody that would be able to help to recruit and manage quite a big team mm. that was distributed there for a big area and I'd certainly done that in the past so that was that was that was a big sort of yes I can do that uh, as well as working in large organizations a lot of mm. conservationists haven't worked in big corporates and um, this mm. particular role is working with a big corporate with you know a very large um spread out team structure across a big area of the uk so mm. it's um it's about understanding how things work within big organizations that i kind of brought to the party and um also the it experience because yeah. a lot of the sensing of um you know, the remote sensing, the um, GIS mapping, um, understanding how we would integrate the information into the um, corporate IT systems for decision making um, was all something that they really wanted to make happen. So um, that was that was the other big tick in the box, really. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So what are you doing now, then? What is your job? Yeah. Um, what is yeah, my let's job? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as I said at the beginning, I'm a, I'm a project manager for yeah. the um, biodiversity framework project for um, Network Rail Eastern Region. So um, Network Rail is the organisation that owns the the track, the um, the signals, the line side. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't operate the trains. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that is is the train operating companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they they do all the rest of the infrastructure effectively. And they, so, am I right thinking they own the land then, and they own yes. these potentially quite valuable yeah. corridors yes. for yeah. wildlife? Absolutely. So the job at the moment is to define better working practices and a way of helping them to implement the biodiversity net gain legislation within mm -hmm. those working practices and their obligations. Yeah. Um, so it's setting a team of people up who across the country can work with the teams and define uh, what the targets are going to be and then how that's going to work in practice, um, putting together effectively habitat management plans for the, the line side estate. So that's what we're helping them do. Um, oh, yeah. So we've got a, a team of ecologists who are effectively doing that and it, a little, the work day to day is um Lots of things. It's it, it's it's managing the team, um, recruiting new people in, getting them on board, and uh, getting everybody's sort of development um, as part of what they're doing. Um, everybody's coming with different skills, um, so really exciting getting the team together mm -hmm. and uh, planning the work out and working with all of the um, different uh, parts of the organisation to understand how we're going to need to work with them um, mm. and be able to um, integrate with what's going on in those various areas and all their other priorities that obviously they've got them running a safe and effective railway. So it's uh, it's very much around making sure that we have um, all of that integration in place and doing all of the sort of nuts and bolts of the, the um, managing the day-to-day -day of uh, the invoicing and the um, all the contract stuff as well. So lots of that too. So yeah, there's all sorts of aspects to it. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's very much around um, making sure that we um, meet expectations and, you know, help them to to do something rather than just handing something over and going right we've done something there you go it's about making something that really can make a difference to um the way they work with biodiversity on the line side so um a lot of it is around um uh, understanding what's good for those habitats making sure that the team have kind of got that across in the information that they're providing mm. and what i loved about that earlier on you said you know you, you understood that you didn't want to work as like maybe a ranger award and that wasn't quite for you you wanted a bigger impact and what you just said was you know it's helping people to understand the impact on biodiversity across this quite large network of corridors so it feels like you sort of moved in the direction and landed a bit where you wanted to be what do you want to share around what it's actually like to work now you're kind of in within kind of conservation and sustainability just warts and all, like we're not here to glorify this as the 
perfect job or sector that's really important to us like what would you share with others who might be listening who are thinking oh that sounds good but what's it really like you know is it what you expected what the good bits the bad bits share what you wish yeah yeah i mean i, I the world life trust themselves and the the world life trust consultancies are, are great organizations i think they're full of people who are you know so like-minded and dedicated to the cause really in terms of mm. you know actually um just being on the ground helping um helping to make a difference in in um the environment and biodiversity so um that's just nice in itself um, and people who you know are really motivated by making that happen is is fantastic so mm. um certainly loving that um on a day-to-day -day basis um i think one of the hardest things for me particularly with this particular job is it, it's so spread out my my mm. patch if, as it were goes from london right up to northumberland all the way over east anglia <laughs> all the way sort of aligned to the left of Leeds and Sheffield it's huge so um that's the biggest challenge on a day-to-day -day basis is getting everybody together often enough and um you know really just keeping everybody in contact and um mm. you know just making sure that we're um helping to support people in the role as well as you know actually getting the the um, client sort of work done as well so there's there's always lots of things going on with that that's hard and um i, I yeah on a day-to-day -day basis I and mean, one of the biggest challenges that there's been is actually finding ecologists who've got botany experience mm -hmm. um that's one huge thing i a lot of ecology work has been obviously driven by um where people want to pay for work and that's driven by the legislation and in the past it's largely been around protected species work and yep. so people have ecologists with botany experience who can do uk hab um, which is the um, condition assessment for for biodiversity that feeds into the defra biodiversity metric uh, um, quite scarce um, so uh, yeah that's a, that's a great niche area if <laughs> That's a little nugget of insight. You can yeah. develop their skills. Um, yeah. I keep seeing lots of jobs where people are people are keen for that. So yeah, there's uh, certainly more more and more work happening in that area now. So yeah, um, recruitment mm. is is one of those things that is a ongoing um, ongoing yeah. thing that is um, it takes a lot of time, doesn't it? <laughs> It does. And I'm aware that the kind of consultancy sector is growing. It is expanding. You mentioned yeah. like biodiversity net gain, which is a new legislation just to come in, isn't it? Which is about yeah. proving that any development you do has a bigger positive impact than the negative impact it has on That's the environment right, yeah. and allowing you to work off site somewhere else, even if you're working on site with the developments. It's really quite it's a huge opportunity for creating new habitats and saving and protecting species. Yes. I think what's really interesting with what you're doing is most consultancies um, are probably working within the private sector. You know, they are a business, whereas you're, you're working for a charity that has this kind of business at its core, this consultancy, which I think is just an incredible model. It's a great model. You know, it's, it's, it's presumably providing funds for the charity, enabling them to grow and do more outside of just the consultancy piece, you know, in, on their reserves and elsewhere. And Absolutely, yes. it's really... Yeah innovative you know it's a really yes way. yeah yeah and i think that there is um there's a lot um of realization now that there's there's more benefit um for big organizations as well working with organizations like the wildlife trust consultancies because all our profits go back into the reserves and um and the charity in general so it, mm. all, it all really helps um to um actually almost deliver a, an additional benefit to um the work itself that we're doing directly it because it, it, it also feeds into helping to improve the um sort of the reserves in the trust yeah yeah so, it's a massive win-win isn't it really yeah, and i guess is, for clients yeah. like national rail um you know they network, can be investing yeah. so what did i get it wrong didn't i what was it network rail it's all right thank you very much <laughs> network rail i knew i said it wrong as soon as i said it so thanks for correcting me but for them it's an opportunity yeah. to be investing in nature reserves in some respects isn't it yes yeah yeah. That yeah. Way. yeah yeah no they um they they're very interested in in making sure the social aspect works really well so um it's 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 definitely something for them to be able to um work with us and also to get the sort of benefit of the experience of all of the trusts as well so um it, it is very much one of those 
um, areas which is expanding and there's there's lots of opportunities really at the moment to to do some really really great things. Let's talk about that then. So um, <laughs> uh, what advice would you give for people listening if they wanted to? I'm going to ask it in two bits. So the first bit is, yeah, if someone wanted to work particularly within your area of work now, so ecological consultancy, project management, you know, um, yeah. What advice would you give someone who wants to kind of move into that career path? What steps should people take? You've already mentioned like botanical skills are really valued. What else should people understand and know? Yes, I mean, I, I think uh, it will be different for everybody, depending on where you are yeah. currently. Um, but doing that gap analysis for yourself and understanding that motivation is mm. is really, really key. Um, I, I, I think the one thing I would say is just find some actual job roles that you think are, are really, you know, the thing that you might be going for and just pick something. And yeah. say, okay, well, I'll go for this. Um, and it, you can change tack later, but at least explore something definitely. Um, certainly, uh, when I've been looking at applications coming in um, from the other side of the desk, it's mm. very much been, you know, you can really differentiate yourself by being really keen on that particular role and um, mm. really actually sort of saying, honestly you know what can i do what can i bring to this you know what have i done before um yeah. i'm really sort of writing to all those aspects on the job spec um it's just you know mm. amazing how many people want you as the recruiter to make all those links themselves and anybody that's actually gone to the effort of saying yes i can do this it shows that they're you know a interested uh, be capable and probably actually going to apply themselves sensibly to doing the job. So, yeah, um, yeah it, you, I would say um, that is just general advice anyway. Um, yeah. But, I mean, particular skills gaps. Um, people are always looking for people with good IT experience. Um, even if people are graduates or um, are, are coming into the sector, um, if they can learn uh, graphical information systems, GIS like QGIS, um, which is free, yeah. um, ArcGIS is the yeah. big sort of a big platform one, mm -hmm. um, which is um, there is a cost associated with that. But um, QGIS is a fantastic start. That's what all ecologists use. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if you can get some good skills in that beyond just sort of knowing what the name of it is, and what it yeah. is. <laughs> and there's loads of online courses. I'm sure you can learn. There's, you there's yeah. a lot of things, um, and I think that that's a, a fantastic skill. Um, people are getting skills in working with drones, working with mm. um, sort of AI, um, interpreting big data sets, anything mm. like that is is um, really in demand at the moment in, mm. in ecology. Um, so, yeah, all of that sort of skill set is really important. Um, I think as is the um, engagement and comms kind of thing about explaining messages and being able to do that, that's always mm -hmm. um, one of those things that is, it's, it's um, great to find good people who can do that. So, um, yeah, I think all of those sorts of areas. Um, I think as well, I mean, that's not specific to what I'm doing, but there are opportunities in nature-based solutions um, and sort of um, green um Green finance and also sort of um, natural capital, that sort of area as well. Um, you, you do see a lot of things there. It's still a very emerging area, so it's quite easy yeah. to build up a good sort of um, skill base in that. So um, I, th I would say that's another area worth uh, investigating if, if people are interested in that. So, yeah, plenty of, plenty of options. Great advice. Yeah. And I'm just excited because all these things you're mentioning, these are all growth areas. This is all kind of going in the right direction for biodiversity, yeah, actually. Yeah. You know, there's industries yeah. and skill sets building up around a lot of these things. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, there yeah. And there's opportunities for people. That's it's really good. Yeah. I, mean, I think there will be a lot over the next sort of five years where um, mm. you see business and um, conservation and mm. biodiversity coming together a lot more as there is that sort of link between um, the I suppose the delivery side in terms of, of, yeah. of what happens on the ground and the finance to sort of 
help to make it happen in the yeah. in the big sense from um i think there'll be a lot with um organizations like pension funds that are managing risks and things like that wanting to do things there so um yeah. i would expect that there's there's going to be a lot of movement in that area over the next few years which is is big picture conservation um yeah. as i explain to people like it's it, it, it um it's not one vote at a time it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely so, uh, yeah. just one wallet as, a, as an aside i have a nest box a barn on nest box with a camera at the moment so i'm getting pings on my phone every time the owl delivers one vol at a time <laughs> into the <laughs> nest so every morning i'm looking to see what's going on yeah yes <laughs> but no, this is much bigger picture than that yes, uh, we're talking yeah. about green careers here as we're starting to wrap up and we're going to go to our um, audience in a minute and ask them questions um now you're part of the iema green careers team and that's something that we wanted to discuss while we're here together. Like, what's the IEMA Green Careers team or steering group? Like, what is it? What's your role? How might it be interesting or useful to people as well? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it, um, it's very much about looking at the bigger picture about what the skills gaps are to bringing people mm -hmm. into sustainable careers in general mm -hmm. Um, at all stages so right from school right through to people who are later in career switching um, but really um, helping to identify opportunities to help to educate people on what's what's possible um, mm -hmm. and uh, providing you know courses and support to some extent and um also influencing policy really in the in the bigger mm. sense so um you know do, would it be good to have a study into something you know that sort of thing so um yeah lots of uh, areas where there's uh, policy stuff um it, and mm. the bigger picture really so yeah. um, it, it's uh, it's very much um something where we're looking at what the opportunities are how do we tell people about things how do people actually know what are um sustainable jobs um yeah. so there's been quite a lot of work recently around a sort of um a portal to help to bring some of this information together and uh, to to help to promote that but obviously through um IEMA there's there's a sort of wider remit in terms of uh, sustainability energy um mm -hmm. you know carbon management and accounting and that sort of uh larger focus than just the conservation side so yeah um, a, 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 a big remit and bringing in people from lots of different areas and disciplines as well to um, look at transitioning existing um, industry sectors as well as um, new ones that are, are uh, being created at the moment so yeah got yeah Sounds Lots great. Yeah, things. and presumably yeah. there are resources online people can go and find out about. They that. are, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you go and um, search for IEMA Green Careers, there's plenty of information online there. Great, great. All right. Well, as we start to wrap up, then, if it's all right, I'd love to ask you some sort of more open questions, which we often ask on the podcast. Um, uh, the first one I'll block out the air is if we could take you to anywhere on the planet and you could see any species, where would you like to go and what would you like to see? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Um, I really would love to go and see um, some of the trees, so some of the real old Methaloosa pines and things, um, so some of the very, very old trees. And uh, You're like, you mean like big redwoods or something like that? Or? No, no, they're, they're really ancient um, pines that are in the, the desert. They've been there for like 4,000 years. Yeah. Um, so there's just there's some of the oldest trees on the planet, some of the oldest living things. Uh, I think it's just phenomenal. Um, yeah, oh, oh, I mean, I, I'm equally as happy in a, in a field in England seeing an old oak tree, to be honest. Um, it, I went to Croft Castle in Herefordshire and looked up They They have a, a um, something called the quarry oak in um a, a sort of slightly wet scooped out quarry area there and it's been there for almost a thousand years and it looks like something um incredible i mean if, if you've um seen some of those um japanese um animations um the um Miyake ones it, it's like some fantasy thing out of that it's absolutely incredible tree um, so yeah, there's there's some incredible trees in this country as well. So I'm equally happy doing that. 
I mean, going back thousands of years where they're still living organisms, just crazy when you think of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Four thousand years, it's like way back to yeah. the Egyptians. Yeah, incredible. Absolutely. So yeah, I think that that for me is is just phenomenal. And it's just about what are we going to leave behind as well, and that yeah. sort of legacy thing. So yeah, some fantastic stuff. Yeah. Um, think about what we're going to leave behind then. Um, conservation and wildlife is having a pretty tough time globally. You know, we are seeing alarming declines. Um, are you optimistic for the future of nature? I'm, I am optimistic that we can do things. I think we're going to have some crises on the way. Mm. And I think it's something that it is becoming evidence to a lot of people that you know the environment as a whole is our life support system it is very much you know it's the air we breathe it's the food we eat it's everything and it's it's not an optional add-on so mm -hmm. i think people are getting that message there's a lot of stuff that um you know you can pick up any um any news feed you like these days and it's it, or any bit of social media and it's full of all sorts of things that aren't about that but one of the heartening things is when you do get involved in the sector is to see how many people really are doing stuff on the ground and they do care and what efforts are going on with governments and with other organizations to really actually make a positive difference mm -hmm. and I think that that does make me optimistic um, we have got some immense challenges <laughs> yeah well, on that optimistic note, I think that's a great place to wrap up. Claire, it's been so lovely talking to you about your work oh, and you. seeing everything you've done and continue to do. And yeah, thank you so much. I know you're a very busy lady. So thank you for sharing your time with us uh, and the best of luck into the future. We'll be thank watching with much. interest. Fantastic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that everyone. If you did, then please do hit the subscribe button to get notified of new episodes as they drop. And also please give us a rating or a review because it really helps us to get in front of more people and we really enjoy reading them all. As you'll have heard, our podcasts are now recorded in front of a live audience who sit in and listen to the chat. And then after the mics are turned off, they get a chance to talk to the host, to share their thoughts and also to ask questions. It's a really great format. If you'd like to be in the audience, all you need to do is join the Conservation Careers Academy. Now in the Conservation Careers Academy, you'll get full access to the world's biggest conservation job board, listing over 15,000 jobs, volunteer and internships across the globe each year. You'll also enjoy access to our amazing CC Pro private members community with regular events, networking and support. Plus you'll get full access to our growing library of career boosting resources, guides and templates. And best of all, it only costs a few dollars, euros or pounds per month to join the academy. Now to find out more, please visit conservation-careers.com forward slash academy or simply click the join button at the top of our website. See you on the inside.